All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambol, and with me as always, I'll say Jonathan, you say Adler. Adler. <laughs> Adler. I was supposed to Jonathan say Bobo Adler. Bobo Adler. I was trying to do the, uh, the Uso Brothers with that I know, one. I, I, I caught up on too slow. It's hard. Sorry. It's hard to do that it is, one. It is hard. Uh, I find myself wanting to do that at impro- <laughs> and, like inappropriate occasions. Just yelling out. Who's sorry. Yeah, like I'll say ooze, you say oh. I was saying umlaut today a lot. Like, like umlaut. No, I was, I was saying like I, I, kept, I was trying to make umlaut work in like a like a a bad fashion. I'm like mm-hmm. keep your umlaut out of my business. Mm-hmm. Like that type of umlaut. Do you talk to yourself during the day? Oh, <laughs> day. Yeah, me too. Man. Do you do it when you drive? Oh yeah, yeah. I way. do it. I do it mostly when I'm like I'm up and about doing stuff. Like yes, if I'm like going to go do stuff, mm-hmm. I have to have a running narrative. I have to have some type of dialogue between the self. You and the stuff that's happening. Yeah, yeah. I a do. lot of times, and it's, a lot of it's like weird material or repetition. I, I think I, I think is a sign of craziness when you do repeat a lot of stuff. Does uh, does your lady know about that? I've told her about it. She, she, I mean, it would never happen in front of her. Okay. I don't. I, I definitely turn it off when there's other people around. But if I'm by myself, I'd be talking. I'm uh, I, at this point, I'm comfortable enough to like let it out, but. But again, like with with the lady, she is just like really like you talk to yourself during the day. I'm like, yeah, I talk to myself pretty much if I'm alone and I'm doing stuff all day. But you know why I do? You know, like why I stop myself because mm. if like my girlfriend, she has a habit of you know asking open questions, like you know, like driving, like well, look at that house. Who lives in that house? And okay. I, and I feel that the nece- you know I feel it's my duty to answer the question. Yeah. So I don't freaking know who lives in the house. Yeah. But I, and it, but it drives me crazy. Like, why are you asking that freaking question? And I'm realizing that it's just her train of thought, and she's asking this open question. That's so, her. That's her way of doing it. As yeah, yeah, to, yeah, 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 totally. And I and, and it drives me nuts. So I feel I I mm-hmm. stop myself from, you know, yeah. doing a weird version of like pour some sugar on me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the the female answer because like I'm sure I'm sure we'll, we're we're <laughs> similar in the in the fact that like I'll drive around and I'll be like. I'll be like some guy crossing the street. I'll be like, oh guy, yeah, I bet that guy's a real asshole and real. Oh, and yeah. probably beats his wife. It, and then you like drive by and it's you're like, like dragnet, <laughs> you know. And then on like the female end of the spectrum is like, I wonder what that guy does. <laughs> and I don't see a good dad. <laughs> not, <laughs> not good. No one cares about dads. <laughs> is he? Is he a good wife? Is I, he a uh, good husband? I do a lot of. Uh, it's almost like a like an old like noir, like a detective noir, where it's a uh-huh. running commentary. Like this, this piece of garbage driving his car. Cut me off. The part of the job I hate. You're on the bird. I told you about that. No. Or I went. I went nuts. In oh, the, in the uh, the Great Neck Park. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was last week. You first uh, time I threw my bird. Yeah. <laughs> the first time you threw the bird. I th- I've never thrown the bird in public. Really? I, I've never like legitimately thrown the bird where I actually meant it. Like, sure, I've done like like me. Yeah, like really, like you <laughs> meant it. Like I've never in- unconsciously. Throw my finger at somebody. Oh, welcome to the club, sir. Have you ever done that? Oh, absolutely. Really? You do yes. it all the time? I know. Not all the time, but like there's it's part of the repertoire. There's been mm. like several occasions, like driving or even like on foot, where I've just like I've kicked cabs who've like oh, I've done that before. Like on the street that have cut me off. Yeah. I've kicked cabs in the bumper and yeah. just like one side and then walk to the other and then just like Middle fingers. I, yeah. I become like an Italian I man. Do. I'm like, fuck yeah. you. And I do one of I, these. I wish, yeah. I, I wish I could do that more often. I just usually just try to berate the person. Oh, this? Yeah. What is this called? The umlaut. What, what do you call this? The, it's like the bafangul. Yeah, yeah. like I, I like this. One. I love that. I think that's. I think it's yeah. much more potent. It's so much going on. Like that. That's good. I've done that. Uh, I've done that like a bunch. It's, uh, this is this is a yeah. lot, this is a lost art form. That's yeah, a that good is. Yeah. I'll do that sometimes. You know. Uh, I, I I really should. St- I really want to start doing the, the full arm. Again, I think that's very effective. Oh, yeah, one of those. <laughs> what a good cross, dude! Dude, there's a lot of variations to it. You know, like yeah, I, you, you do you do this, but I think that the the cross. Yeah, this, see that? I, I like this one. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with him with yeah. that. Like just like a little good, to the like, side, like a big yeah, slap. Kind of like yeah, it's kind of like you're stopping a punch. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yeah. a horse penis, by the way. That's a horse penis. <laughs> horse penis. It's a horse dick. House penis. house yeah. penis. Uh. But yeah, like I definitely, have, mm-hmm. I, I've never really except except this one moment of me flipping out in my car because the car is the is a catalyst. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think the most angry I can be is is in a car in a car. Yeah, like, me too. I, because you are a threat to me. You're screwing with me. Yeah, it's very personal. Yeah, it is so personal. 
I'll agree with that. Well, because in the back of your mind, you're kind of like, we're both driving two tons of metal right now. Like, please, sir, be as careful yeah. as you can be and don't like try to damage my life right now. Yeah. And or, hold, my, or my car. Or wreck my car. Have or you like, ever followed anyone? Hold me up, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. I do it all the time. Me too. Yeah. I lost my mind in front of Jessica when Jessica used mm-hmm. to teach out of school in Flushing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there was like nowhere to park mm-hmm. because it was like in the middle of a snowstorm. So like I was pulled out a little bit so I should get out and this woman came like honking like a lunatic mm-hmm. and like screaming. Put the car in park. I got out. I started screaming. I started slapping mm-hmm. our hood. I did the whole crazy person thing and I wouldn't move for 30 minutes. Yeah. I stopped traffic uh, on that block for 30 minutes. At a spite. Out of spite, yeah. Spice. What a move. Ah, it's so crazy. And you know what's funny, too, is, like, that that's so relative to our part of the country. Um, where, like, if you go somewhere else and you're, like, you're automatic, just because of the way, like, you have to kind of drive around here, you're automatically the asshole. You gotta be, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Which, you have to be. Like, I, uh, uh when I went to, uh, I know you're, you might be going to Vermont soon. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time I went to Vermont, I drove... And the place where we're going, it was like at the top of a mountain and everybody's going like 10 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm losing my shit. I'm okay with that. I'm just like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm like trying to like pass people and like the oncoming lane and everything. And, you know, we settle in, we go to like, we go to like a bar and, you know, like I'm talking to the bartender and the conversation, the traffic comes up and, you know, he wasn't from Vermont either. He was just like from another part of the country. And he's like, he's like, seriously, like everybody here drives like 10 miles an hour because there's no um there's no dividers on the mountain and there's Mm. a lot of accidents here and he was like it's not so much that there are accidents is that if you god forbid get into an accident and like your car tips over the mountain they're not going to find you for like another couple of days because there's really nothing there's no response yeah you know and he's like so technically like you're the asshole and i was like oh good to know sorry you're the asshole you know yeah you know well my whole block (laughs) is now covered in in lights because of there is always an accident because I live near a school. Yeah. And yeah. so when there's a, when school lets out, mm-hmm. you know, the logic tells you, you know, take it slow. But no, all the parents, like, I need <sighs> to pick up my children and get a parking spot before anyone, and I'm going to murder everyone on the way while doing it. Yeah. Because screw your kid. <laughs> or that. It's a lot. Uh, it's, really, it's really nuts. Like, there's, there's a million accidents on my block, too. Because it's at the divider between Flushing and Bayside, as mm. far as the precincts go. Mm-hmm. So on one side of the block, it's the 109. On the other, it's the 111. Mm-hmm. So if you're stu- if you have an accident and you're stuck in the middle, there's just like two sets of squad cars coming to inspect it. It's really nuts, man. And there's always like accidents and like weird police stuff happening. Um, also, Flushing is the number one home for accidents in New York State. I believe it. You know? I believe it for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, that's because of all the Nazis. All the Nazis. <laughs> like the other day, I was, I was coming mm-hmm. out of uh, the movies, and you know, like when you're coming out of 28th Street, you make the right onto Horace Harding. Oh, yeah. The thing. So this dude was in front of me, and he, he's at the corner, and he mm-hmm. stops at the corner. Like he pulls in, stops at the corner, and puts his hazards on. Yeah. And that's where I'm supposed to be making my, my turn. I'm like, just, I'm honking, I'm just move a mm-hmm. little bit up because you're blocking the, the thing. So I go, like, you know, it's my turn to turn, and I, and I'm, I do like the slow, and I grill him. And this dude, like, he's looking at me like with the big bug eyes, like, looking at me like, you know, like this, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna do? Uh-huh. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna drive my car. I'd just be pissed off. At yeah, you. exactly. Like I'm, I don't have a gun. What sir. are you gonna do? Or, what did you see at the movies? Well, I saw X Men. And that's how we transition into the comic book show. What a movie! What a segue! What a movie! Yeah. What a movie! Give me without. You know what? Give me a little spoiler and a and a little and a more of a review. Okay. Uh, overall, it gave me the same feeling that Avengers did, where I got that excited about. Mm. The property, which I'm really surprised myself yeah, yeah, yeah. for feeling. That's awesome. Um, it's much more 1970s stuff. It's definitely keeping in line with the first class stuff. It definitely, uh-huh. like, the, my biggest fear was that that stuff was kind of going to get, you know, shoved away. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, so, they were so good. The other stuff, like the the future stuff, is all kind of framing sequences. Okay. Um, but the X Men team they chose for the future is pretty damn cool. Uh, the Sentinels in the future are ridiculous. They made they made them into like these big, uh, power sucking. Like they can mimic everyone's powers. Like, like is it? Are they like a Nimrod? Kind of. They, they go into why they do this and everything. But they're awesome. Like they're mm-hmm. so cool looking. Your team in the future is Xavier, Magneto, Storm, Warpath, Blink, uh, Sunspot, mm-hmm. uh, Sunspot, really, and Key Pride. Uh, Sunspot. They just went the generic fire. Like he's Human Torch. Yeah. Uh, Warpath is awesome. Blink is ridiculous. Yeah. They fully 
played Portal and like how let's do this in the movies. Let's have the okay. you know shooting this way, bring the beam this way. Like it's all about that. Like they do an oh, oh Colossus on the team also. They okay. do an, an absolutely incredible blink Colossus fastball special uh-huh. by just having him drop from multiple portals to gain momentum. Do we get a uh, Wolverine Colossus fastball special? No. Oh, very on. very little interaction between all those dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mostly in the seventies. It's mostly you know tracking down a character and mm-hmm. um, a lot of Xavier because it's just Xavier, Magneto, uh, Wolver- old Wolverine, no, young Wolverine, mm-hmm. um, Beast, Mystique, and some old like they show like Havoc for a second. They show a young Toad. They show Ink for a second. Remember Ink? Ink. From young X, from young X Men, he's the guy with the tattoos. And if you put a tattoo of like the Phoenix on him, he'll have the Phoenix powers. If he has like nuclear system symbol, he can make you sick. I don't remember that guy. Very short lived yeah? character. I was, was he was from the Yost New X Men. He was the other the, okay. when they did the yellow the yellow costume. Yeah, uh, like the second iteration of the young X Men mm-hmm. with uh, after Hellion. Yeah, it was like okay. it was. Like, yeah, that's when I dropped the book with okay. Dust and and Rock Slide and but it was mostly like brand new characters. And mm-hmm. Ink was like one of their focal points. Really? Anyway, uh, Quicksilver. He looked st- he looked so stupid in the trailer. He was so freaking awesome. Stole the movie. Uh, Dinklage is great. Story is great. Mm-hmm. Action is awesome. Really, everything about the movie really like. There's like maybe uh-huh. twenty minutes in the movie where like because. It starts out so great and it carries that energy over throughout the whole movie. And there's like 20 minutes of like just resetting the pieces around that it's a little bit like, you know, I want, I want some more action right mm-hmm. now. But it's so awesome. End of the end of the movie, awesome. The after credits is awesome. Everything was spot Now, on. do you think most people got the end? No. My girlfriend had no idea what we were doing. Uh, the, but they thought no, it was no, cool. The, like the bonus scene. Yeah. Give people, me, you think people got it or no? Nobody got you it. You probably know what the, the Give thing. me a yes or no. Apocalypse. Yeah. Okay. Did they show him? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Is it? Is it but like no? Oh. No, it's I, not apocalypse though. It's apocalypse. No, but like he's not in like his final form. Okay. Spo- spoiler alert. Just just lay it out for me. So all it is is they they show like a bunch of people chanting and Saba Nur, and they like a screenshot and they show like you know the desert. There's a cloaked figure with your with the camera to his back, mm-hmm. and he they chanting his name. He raises his arms up, and you see like the blue skin, and you start seeing like. The, he's assembling the um, the pyramids by like huge blocks, like with his mind, like whatever. He's just, like, <laughs> assembling these gigantic yeah. pyramids. The crowd's going crazy. The camera pans around him. You see his face. It's just like a young blue Egyptian guy. Mm-hmm. And you see in the horizon the four horsemen. Okay. Houseman. Yeah. Yeah. Listen here, Tully Blanchard. Yeah. See, no, like not that. those kinds? Not those guys. Oh. Different show. I, I like that because. There's a lot if if you're going forward with the franchise, which I'm sure it is. Well, this Age of Apocalypse is really going to be the next movie. I'm so excited for this. Um, I'm so excited because that is my favorite saga. Go see the movie. Go see the movie in the theater for real. Like I, I, no, just, I saw it already. He yeah. saw it on you on Wikipedia. Yeah, he, yeah he I, I saw it, it on text. Wikipedia. I have a question for you though. Uh, from what I read about the Age of Apocalypse, it's not going to be the original saga. It's going to be. We, are, we have no idea. No okay, one's, but, no one's but this is what yet. I read, and you tell me what you think. Because now this is the comics that I understand. This is what I know. Mm. It's not going to be the original Age of Apocalypse. It's going to be the one from the mid '90s. There's only one Age of Apocalypse. Well, the one from yeah, but there was a po- there was Apocalypse early on, in the '80s. No, what? No, you're okay. ta- you're thinking about like when he debuted and when like, he debuted and like stuff like that, Archangel and all that. Yeah, it's not going to be any of that. It's going to be the Age of Apocalypse from like the mid '90s, leading into like no X Men no. Prime, Omega, and Alpha. No, you, no don't know, you have no idea what, what that's going to be. That's what I gathered from that. It's just like it's up in the air, but that's going to be. It just the all they know is that all that all that is going to be X Men Apocalypse <laughs> is the only title that they've said about this. It's not Age of Apocalypse on anything else. It is just Apocalypse. It will mm-hmm. be the villain. Um, See, that gets me excited because there's a lot of stuff to play with. Within the franchise now that oh, yeah. now that they're going that Avengers route of like kind of like mixing everything exactly and also they nail the time travel stuff like this mm-hmm. is the first time like there's so many uh, great comic book stories that have to deal with time travel yeah and this is like really embracing it and making it feel like comic book time travel it's a lot of fun um now who's who's playing Apocalypse 
no Dustin idea. Hoffman. Just, yeah. Nobody, right? It's it, it's some kid. In Dustin this Hoffman. Movie. But they're gonna. I, I think they're gonna. Go, you'll. I think they'll do the origin story. They'll have two people play like the young and Zabanor mm -hmm. and do like the living mummy do, story. Or, or from what I read, also they may follow the the animated series storyline. But dude, there's no. This is all speculation. Yeah. I know, but what would you like to see? Uh, I, I don't want to see the later one. I'd rather see the later one. Absolutely. The 96 stuff one, from yeah. like X-Men 300 on. You're talking semantics. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, I'm talking about the future storyline where you have the idea that Xavier's killed at an early age. And, and Magneto's taken over. And Apocalypse is taken over. And Magneto's like the leader of the X-Men. Yeah, he's the yeah. Xavier yeah. in that. In and Wolverine's got one arm. Yeah. And all that. I hated that. I hated that story. Well, he was, the le he was the least favorite of, of a lot of people. But the... the um, I thought that's where they were going to kind of end the movie off. They thought they were going to, you know, kill off Xavier in, mm -hmm. in like the past, and that's how this whole thing kind of jump starts. Because they're already doing time travel as it is. Right. Um, but I don't think they're going to go that route. I think that, because they do something very specific in this movie, that I don't think they would go the route of another mm -hmm. alternate reality. Okay. Does anybody die in the flick? Uh, I don't want to say. Okay. I'd rather not say. So it's nobody major. I would rather not say. Okay. Um, because if that, if that, because it really thing, is an unpredictable, unpredictable film. For really? The most part, yeah. Okay. Because my, my whole thing is that, like, when you're, when you're playing within the realm of the X Men universe, as far as the movies go, is that my number one pick, if you're going to do Four Horsemen and Apocalypse, Cops, Cyclops. Mm. Like, James, bring James Marsden back as Cyclops. I'm not going to say, like, you know. say anything then. Yeah. Because you did, because is that, is that the thing? Is that time travel? Does he get somehow brought back to life? Is I mean, there. You should ruin it. For the everybody. best, the best, of, the best thing about this is it it gives you real hope for what they can do with the X Men. Okay. Was Universe. this the best one you think, in your opinion? Yeah, as as yeah. a comic book, fan, it's got to be. This yeah. has to be the best this was, one. This yeah. was like, like my biggest problem going into this was I was so afraid of this because the Brian Singer way of making the X Men one and two at the time was really great. I yeah. think it's a very yeah. aged way, and I think it's a very it's a way of approaching X Men without it being too comic booky and too nerdy. Right. It was a way for the pop culture. For that to enter regular pop culture. I think now that we have such acceptance to superhero stuff that this is so crazy and so X-Men that it was it was so satisfying. Okay. It's the same reason why, like, essentially why we keep going back to this X-Men well of what makes you excited about X-Men yeah. is all in this movie. Yeah, It's really, like, solid, solid movie making. And you know what? A big part of that is Fassbender and uh, McAvoy. They're so unbelievably Awesome mm -hmm. as young Xavier and young Magneto. Those guys are committed, man. I love. They were great, yeah. and I was really afraid because Fastbender is a, a, a big guy in this, on the rise for the most part, mm -hmm. but he's doing a lot of smart choices. He was so dynamite, and like he was basically the main character of the movie. The two of them mm -hmm. have more screen time than Wolverine does in the movie. My wife would enjoy that. Yeah, huge Fastbender fan. He's awesome in this. Um, I'm so excited for the future of this franchise. Now. That's good. Yeah. This guy, his uh, idea of watching a movie. Oh, is, Bishop's on the team also. That's the other one. Yeah, that's the other one. That's uh, the it's a Windows 95 text adventure. Yes. <laughs> Where it's like you go onto Wikipedia and you're like, ah, oh, I've seen it. It's, oh, it's only a Magneto small, says. It's, a small win, it's like a small window inside of your window. Do you do, uh, do, you do the old school thing? I, I used to do this when, when I was in uh, like junior high. Because you know you had like a like a twenty eight eight modem, is you would download the uh, screenplays and just like read them. Yeah, I used do you to do, do that? that? Yeah, I used to like do that. would have you? Did you do that with the new X Men movie? Not recently, no. But okay. I did read a fan fiction. This was so good. Uh, recently about um, just nonsense. This was so tight. It was so satisfying. You think it was the yeah. best one? Yeah, it, better they, than the first two. Absolutely. The, the, like I said, the first two's biggest problem is they haven't aged very well, and they were that very soberly. Yeah, but the first polished. Spider Man. I mean, the first Spider Man didn't age well either. Spider Man. Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> the first two. The second awful. one. They awful. They they uh, age terribly. The second I mean, one holds up. All three of them. All three of them. Second one holds up more. Uh, what? X Men. Uh, X Men Two. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, I hate. I hate first the broad terrible. in there. The which one? I hate her. The broad. Mary Jane. You're talking about the second X Men. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking. I'm talking about Spider Man. Well, she everything. ruins the movie. For Tom, me. I think Tobey Maguire and the the entire film ruins the movie. I think they're not all, in the first one. I mean, at they're, the all first... they're all terrible. They're all terrible. Yeah. They work. They, I'm telling you, like this. They work. That was the time. those Spider Man, the Spider Man franchise, yeah. and the X Men franchise were the gateway drug. Yes, they were a way to get the public into this and like this. Like, okay, I see why people enjoy X Men, Spider Man. Now we're like full blown. We have Captain America on, on freaking Avengers. Yeah, yeah, we have the Avengers. You know, it's fair game now. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's 
it's really like I said, it's 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 really the realization of how why these guys work so well mm -hmm. and fixing a lot of the problems that they did before that they had before. See, that, that's good. That's a good sign because now your secondary Marvel movies are going to be getting better. Where you know, like it sucks that Edgar Wright got quit Ant Man, but you're also got Doctor Strange with a new director, new director, yeah. um, who I think is going to do a phenomenal freaking job. I hope so. I I think so because Sinister was awesome. Sinister was fantastic. I didn't see um the other Emily one. Rose. Yeah. I saw bits and pieces, but I did like it. Was that Emily Rose or was it How, another one? I have a question yeah. for you. How accurate do you think it was to the original Days of Future Past comic from the 80s? For the framework, it works. I mean, the biggest difference between it is, you know, uh, instead of a Trask, the guy who invented the uh, the Sentinels being the target that's supposed to be killed, it was Robert Kelly in the original. Uh, and also, Kitty Pryde was the one who went back in the past instead of Wolverine. Wolverine. Uh, and, and how about for the animated series? I mean, they're all, they're, they're all different interpretations of the story. Like, the anime series was pretty the good. The thing about it is, yeah, sure, but the thing about the anime series and everything that comes out after that is it's a post-Wolverine popular world. Mm -hmm. uh, before then, like, they were very hesitant to, like, the Claremont stuff was like they used him very yeah, liberally. Very sparse, yeah. Yeah, and, like, and, and, you know, back then you wouldn't even think to put him in the future. You'd kill him off in the first couple panels. Yeah. Now it's I mean, Wolverine Chris Claremont had, yeah, and, like, Wolf, Claremont yeah. had a different vision as far as what he was writing compared to what everybody else had. Well... I mean, it was also he the way he was looking at it was he was really working on the idea of like this equally balanced team of a lot. Like you got a lot of t time with everyone on the team. Mm. You know, everyone was very, very fleshed out on and his his stuff. Yeah, because it, it was the it was the changing of the guard. And it wasn't Wolverine show. Yeah. Now everything's a Wolverine show. I, and I'm very surprised that original Stin because he's sexy. He is, and he's mm -hmm. also he's also still five feet tall in the comics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Six foot three in the yeah. six foot three Australian I love that. biggest guy. Um, he is on some serious steroids, dude. I'll say that. Much. HGH man, he is huge in this. He's going to Russell John Cena he at looks, SummerSlam. He looks like if they if they uh, if Spider Man had flesh and he still had the webs. <laughs> okay, like that's the way his skin looks now. <laughs> he's just like crazy jacked up. Yeah. Um, um, how'd you like Bishop? These are, like these are all short little pieces of the movie, but for what they work as, like I, I think it was a realization that you can take a lot. Of, Who like, went back? Uh, Come now, can I get the first? <laughs> I'm so excited about. <laughs> really this. excited. I, I, I what they do a good job of is like you have such a gigantic cast mm -hmm. of characters to, to pull from. Like have them do little cool things in the back. Like they're not. Yeah. You don't need to give them a dialogue or give them like a monologue or anything like that. Like let them go do cool stuff. Yeah. Like let you know, sunspot burn stuff for whatever reason. That's so weird. They didn't do like the like, power man. He wasn't the power guy. Like black body, like Kirby nope. Crackle, nothing. He's just flying like, around like a human torch. That's exactly so weird. Like human torch. Is he immortal in this? No, nothing. He's he. I tell you, he is literally. I don't think he has. I don't think he has a speaking <laughs> role. I don't think Blink has a speaking role. I don't think I have Bishop has a speaking role. What about Colossus? No, he has to say a word. Really? I think he, no, nothing. Is it the you same dude him. from the other from the other yeah, yeah, yeah. place? Okay. I oh, and Ice Man's on that team. He's got a beard. They they still worked in those like Rogue is in there for one second. Okay, I hate, I always James Morris is, is in the movie. Uh, sweet, I always see that's that's my favorite cycle. And he and you perfect. know what when they show him it's very much like floppy hair, good cyclops. One eye. I'm not saying. Oh man, see I gotta go. I I missed is out. Mojo in it? No, I missed out on Cap. I think it's still in the theater. I think Spidey's still in the theater somewhere. Spider-Man still in the theater. I haven't um, seen it yet. But like now, it's like if if X Men's good for some reason, it kind of trumps it because I want to see some cool X Men stuff. It is it is the it is the X Men mm. version of Avengers. It is so mm. it's unsatisfying in every part. Of it. I saw it in three D. I didn't want to see it in three D. Mm. I I wasn't disappointed with it. See, it's good because like uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Critical Mass and about how if this X Men movie tanks and it or it sucks, it's just going to be like almost not not the death knell of comic book movies, but that critical mass like the, if implosion. The, yeah. If know. those big movies uh, fail, that's mm -hmm. a problem. Like if your if your Avengers, your tentpole stuff kind of fails, I think that's when immediately the industry starts looking at it poorly because now there's it's all gold. It's all yeah. really really doing well. Guardians Guardians has to be better than X Men, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you think so? You think it'll be better? It has to be. Yeah, I think it has to. Why, be better. Why does it? Because it's the biggest movie next to X Men. It's a team picture. Yeah. It's a new franchise. Yeah, uh, but most a, people don't know the franchise. But it doesn't matter. It directly has to do with everything that's coming forward. Yeah, like the Thanos stuff and like the Cosmic Cube, yeah. Infinity Gauntlet stuff. And that's and that's a really cool thing too, because you're getting Nebula, Ronan the Accuser, and Josh Brolin freaking Josh Brolin is Thanos. Oh, shit. That's insane to me. Yeah. Yeah. Who'd have thought? Yeah. But like <clears> I, <throat> I think I think Guardians of the Galaxy is gonna be a success regardless because 
Mm-hmm. The uh, like I was telling you, I, I I sent you the thing about it. like Rocket Raccoon is is, is expected to sell three hundred thousand copies on its first day. Uh, that's a lie. I don't believe so. It's gonna be uh, like that's the thing because we we both know what the deal is. It's it's your your orders are gonna be three hundred thousand exactly. Yeah. But I think it's also gonna do very well. I think mm-hmm. it's gonna it's I think it is going to be at the right time at the right at the right moment. Yeah. That raccoon is selling the crap out of that movie. Everything about that what they're showing in the trailer is. The raccoon. Yeah. But even the fact that you, it's not so, and I understand what you're saying, and yeah. I, I totally agree with you that that is just the projected orders and that's it. Mm. Uh, the fact that we're even having a rocket raccoon, number one, that can be ordered for 300,000 copies. It's really is insane. pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, but that movie definitely has to be, that is the beginning of the next phase. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper's yeah. going to do great in it. I think that's such an important time. Doctor Strange is the biggest gamble, I think, out of everybody. I think, but they're going to go more art house with it and. I think the director they picked it works well. As long as it's not Constantine. As long as they don't approach the occult like they did the with like that type of like accessible boring bullshit. See, I think it's gonna be more like Sinister. Which I which I have no problem. More I have no like pro- down to earth right. guy learning magic type of thing, probably doing an origin story. Yeah. I think I, I think number one, you have a lot to play with with his origin. And you also have a lot to play with with his training. And oh, then, yeah, yeah. like, but, but do you think it's going to be his first adventure? Do you think it's going to be like, I'd rather not I'd, jerk off surgeon. No, I want, I would rather it be, you get that, you get his origin kind mm-hmm. of like splintered through the storyline or whatever, but you're mostly having, um, you know, him being the established mm-hmm. guy. Like, you know, it's such an easy way to interest character. Like you have someone who's in trouble approaching that strange to help them and then going off this whole story. I would love for them to approach it the exact same way that they, that Brian K. Vaughan did. I think that's the perfect mm-hmm. Venue of approaching uh, Doctor Strange is okay. the the cool, sexy, older mm. dude Roger Sterling with a cape, turtleneck. Yeah, turtleneck <laughs> guy living in Grand Village with his Asian slave. They didn't awesome. cast. <laughs> they didn't cast uh, Doctor Strange there. They're saying it's supposed to be that the favorite right now is uh, Jared Leto. Oh, uh, I have no problem with Jared Leto whatsoever. As a human being, yes, I have a lot of problems with Jared Leto. As an actor, he's tremendous. But can you see, see, that's the thing, like, aesthetically, can you see the Jared Leto um, dynamic interact with the Avengers? Because that's, you know, like, you know that's coming. I, I, maybe. I don't know. Because I, I, I would have never, like, before it came, I would have never thought Robert Downey Jr. would be the ideal Iron Man. Iron Man, yeah. I yeah. would have never said the ideal Hulk would have been Mark Ruffalo. You know, they're just surprising the crap out of me with a lot of casting, and they're doing a damn good job with it. I, I, as much as I love Ruffalo as Hulk, like Norton's still my guy on that, man. I think well, Norton on paper is mm. perfect. Like awesome. Like in terms of like aesthetics of being Banner and like the way Banner is and the way that you understand Banner, he is the perfect thing. It's just that he was in the wrong movie. I think his his acting chops are better than Ruffalo's too. I think Ruffalo is really freaking awesome. Yeah, I think he's really good. As as far as that, like who's the better actor? Like Ruffalo or Norton? Norton. Yeah. Norton, definitely. I think that's the thing, man. He was just I think I love that Incredible Hulk movie. I don't love that movie, but I think it was the wrong, mo- the wrong Hulk movie. Yeah, for Norton, absolutely. You know, yeah, like that would have been if Banner returned to the franchise. Perfect. I thought Banner was great too. Banner was good too, man. But like, it's it was- a different type. Of, it's a t- I, like I like I like the like the anti Tony Stark kind of like weirdo uh-huh. Banner. Put Norton in the Avengers movie. No, I I would love yeah. it. I think, but he just you know he swore it off and gave it to Ruffalo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he would have been fantastic. I think it would have been that. Yeah. Much. I think he would have already already had another Hulk movie by then. I agree with that. If you got like your first appearance of Edward Norton Hulk was the Avengers, I think you would have had. Right now, we've been seeing seeing through an incredible Hulk movie. I agree with that, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and you hear like you know so now the next big project for Fox because Fox has a. As a hit mm-hmm. with uh, this is the highest grossing X Men movie so far, right? Uh, that they are going to do a crossover with Fantastic Four, with Josh Trank's Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. and now they're doing a X. Uh, very quietly, Marvel is telling licensors, people who are doing stuff for the 75th anniversary tribute, not to draw Fantastic Four into their into the mix. It's really weird, isn't it? Well, because they they they're, they they really are pissed off about the fact that they don't have Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. They tried everything in their power. To get that franchise back, yeah, and the fact they're also losing Galactus and, and um, Silver Surfer along that that route. Oh, so man. the next four movies are what we had: X Men, Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. uh, Fantastic Four, Avengers, the next Thor, and get... Ant Man. Uh, yeah. Well, Ant Man, Doctor Strange, 
are all part of the next wave. Mm-hmm. That's all the, the pre-planning. So we're up to 2015. That's it. 2015, at the end of 2015, is supposed to be Avengers 2. Yeah. Right? From, um, from what I have here, um, this may be outdated, actually. Um, 8-1 is Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, three six twenty fifteen is Fantastic Four. This May is projected. May twenty fifteen is Avengers, and November twenty fifteen is so the Ant-Man. big. So the biggest thing that you're well, that's all projected. No yeah. one's no one's sense. Nothing's set in stone. Uh, it's gonna be Avengers next for after Guardians of the Galaxy. That's why it's, it's so important for Guardians of the Galaxy to do well, do what they're doing. Yeah, because it's not even setting up phase two. It's phase. It's setting up the next phase. Because right. we're not getting, you know, the big bad guy in the next Avengers is not Thanos. It's Ultron. Right. But we're getting the seeds of this big, you know, company-wide crossover. And amongst mm-hmm. all this stuff, you also have all the Netflix st- stuff happening. Yeah. The what stuff? The Netflix stuff happening. Netflix. Yeah. Netflix has about four to five different series coming out. And Marvel. No. No. Live like, action. Yeah. Daredevil. Uh, Alias. Uh, Luke Cage. Iron Fist. That's is it, it going to be Heroes for Hire? Well, they're all le- no, because they're all leading up to a big crossover mm-hmm. at the end of it to become the defenders. I still want my Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you can get a Moon Knight. See, I want. Do, do you, you know think we're like- gonna eventually see like a whole like Civil War style crossover? Yeah, I think that we're. I think that if they can get um, X Men, no, there's people to k- stick around. No, you don't even need them anymore. No, yeah. it would be great. For, if we- I mean, you would need them for Civil War. No, you, no, you don't. You no, need Spider Man. No, you don't. It's all it, the entire yeah. the, the reason why why Civil War works so well. The Spider Man thing is a, is a footnote into it. The best part about it is the Captain America Iron Man stuff. How right. dynamically different these guys are. Well, see, th- my my big thing is that like you know we keep approaching pr- critical mass with this because every year we're going to talk about the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. Is this movie going to be good? Is this going to be the death of comic book movies? Um, as far as like escalating storylines go, I think you need to after this current run, you need to curb your introduction of heroes. And start throwing in some A list villains. Oh, yeah. Because, you know? like, you have Loki, you have Thanos, and as far as like the Marvel canon go, you have Red Skull, possibly. Yeah. Right? Um, that's about it. You well, know? You, I, I would hope we do Kang. I hope we do, like, I hope you get your mm. classic supervillains. Right. I want Wrecking Crew. I want Baron Zemo. You know, Zemo, is a, Zemo would be awesome in another cat movie. Yeah, yeah I don't, like, and, and he's so easy to introduce. Have him as a guy who got beat in the past, and now the son is trying to take over. Mm-hmm. I think it's visually great. People may not agree with that, but that's true. Um, hate monger, hate monger. But like, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think the um, the the strength always lies on the villains. I think yeah. that's why we love Marvel so much, and we said it before. I, mean, I think that we have like all these characters that we can you know play with. Like Loki is a borderline. Hero at this point. Right, yeah. Which is like, I think that's the movie thing where it's like you eventually have to turn your bad guys good because they're so popular. Yeah. Know? And the Loki thing really caught me by surprise because like fans latched on to Tom Hiddleston like nobody's freaking business. He's a darling right now. Yeah, and uh, and the fact that he's a cool dude too kind of adds to it, like him showing up at Comic-Con and, and pretending and doing Loki. Yeah. You know, which was fantastic. Are you going to go to Eternal Con next week? No, I'm not. The, Are you going to Eternal Con? I might. I might go on Saturday. The uh, Long Island's premiere comic book convention. Uh, I don't, you really going to go? I think so. I might. If you go, let yeah. me know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's at the, uh, I've never been there before. It's at the Garden City Museum of Aviation. I'm pretty sure I was there for a con. Yeah? I think that's where I met uh, Walt Simonson, and he told a really... <laughs> Awful story about um. Told you dirty joke <laughs> about Barry Winter Smith. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not, I think him. I remember you telling me about. I this went story. with Bobby and his fault and his uh, his dad. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was there. Uh huh. Eternal Con. Eternal Con. Um. Internal. What's your favorite Marvel movie, Andrew? The one that you actually saw, Electra. <laughs> uh, that was one of the worst movies Marvel ever made. Yeah, no, it was bad. Uh, probably the second Spider Man and probably the second X Men. Did you see Avengers? I did, yeah. Like you saw it. Yeah. You don't. You don't okay. have that in your ranking. It's not. It was good. It's crazy. The yeah. Iron Man movies are good. Have you seen X Men Two recently? Which one? X Men Two. The one called X. Oh, the 2. old one. Yeah. No. <laughs> have you seen not recently, Iron Man no. recently? Uh, no. You should. You should go back. Probably updated it now. They are. I mean, in my rankings, Iron Man was good. Uh, Captain America was good. 
I mean, they were all good. But I think that I think uh. Uh, you're you're the toughest one to judge by because I think your taste is so terrible when it comes. No, to No, I don't think so. <laughs> I have well, really of course good you're taste. gonna say that. Of course you're gonna say no. no I think we're. T- I'll, but, I'll tell you the third the third uh, Spider Man was baffling to me. Well, I mm. mean everyone Mahatma Gandhi would come down to him. I mean that thing was just <laughs> mind blowing. Like I just did no, not understand you. it. No one did. That well, was that was a new movie. class. New class was good. New class was first class. First class, incredible. Yeah. But we yeah. also, but we also don't know if you're telling us you saw it and saw it, or no, you no, saw no. It I actually saw it and read it. No, 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 no. I actually physically saw. Paid it. attention to it I on a screen. Paid attention. attention? Eh. Okay. Yeah. Saw it. Yes. I hated Daredevil. I'll tell you that. Well, that movie was also fifteen. It's fifteen years old now. Is it really? Yeah. Like all like Spider Man one. No, that movie and... was not fifteen years old. Yeah, man. Ben mm-hmm. Affleck was young. And... What year did Daredevil come out? I want to say. 2001. No. Well, yeah. producer, do it. Do your research. 2001, 2002. Daredevil. Let's see. 2003. That, whatever, man. 11 years old. 11 years old. Yeah. That movie was awful. I could have had a kid in that time. Yeah. It could be in school. Yep. That movie was really bad. And that kid would say he hates that movie. Um, Anything with Jennifer Garner is awful. I, I would love to see... It was, a, it was rated R. What? Electra? The director's cut was rated R. Well, the director's cut's rated R. Why? I think there's because there's a scene More where blood. Uh, yeah, there's like a couple of gory More scenes. Violence. In the movie. I don't remember that. Um, the fact that Coolio's in the movie bothers me. Mm. That sucked. They suck. I, I, I can't. I was, I, you know what? And I did not hate the third X. What was? What was? I'll tell you that. Really? Yeah, I didn't one. hate. I think that's enough to throw out your entire opinion. Right? I yeah. didn't hate it. I'm not saying it was great. I didn't. No, hate but that's it. a movie you're supposed to hate. That's. I think that has more crimes than Daredevil and Electric. I mean, it wasn't good. Didn't, but I didn't hate it. Didn't I didn't like hate Avengers. it as much as the third X, third uh, Spider Man. Didn't like Avengers. Didn't hate X Men. So I didn't say I didn't like Avengers. What's your favorite he movie? Did. All, what's you did? Yeah, he did. What's your favorite movie of all time? Uh. Your top three. My top three movies. Seriously. like I don't want to tell you. Why? I don't want to tell you. I'm not gonna gonna I promise. I promise I won't find. Hey, Andrew, Andrew's two favorite movies? Rudy. White Girls. White Girls. <laughs> Rudy. Rudy's Rudy. Good yeah. Rudy. Rudy. Uh, and um, Gladiator. <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> a lot of people Rudy, Gladiator, and The Godfather Trilogy. I don't, I don't, Rudy, I don't know Gladiator. What the top three are. Best I, don't think I don't think you've ever sat down and watched an entire My movie. Cousin Vinny. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. My cousin's a, I would say my, my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny is one of your favorites, right? Uh, Blow, and Blow is one of your favorite movies. Blow is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Go. What are, and, what are your three favorite uh, movies? I need a third one. Come on, man. Thinking of something awful. Uh, Weird Science. You sounds a great for it. It movie. is a good movie. Yeah. I don't know what my th- for, uh-huh. my my top three are. I mean, they they're always you know. Switching around, I always there's always something. I'm gonna say, give me your th- your top three floaters. Uh, I mean, in terms of importance, not just in terms of no, like, like in terms of like enjoyment and importance, like how much they meant to me as a as a film fan. No, like, uh, like Pulp Fiction is always gonna be like one of my, my American Graffiti. Graffiti is a great movie. What are you? What are you? That's his ne- 100, 100 years old. That's his neighbor. <laughs> That's my neighbor. <laughs> I'm American right Graffiti. For graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I couldn't even say it was oh straight face. Let's uh, uh, Pulp right. Fiction is a great movie. Yeah. Let's Pulp, but Pulp Fiction was something that it, it really introduced me into a different type of filmmaking for the most part. And like, mm. yeah, like, mm. let's uh, all right, let's say not importance, not like you know genre fans or anything like that, but something that you're just like, I can't resist this movie every time. I love this movie so much that I cannot resist it every time it's on. Um, because there's a few. Just just give me like give me like a top like four. Or five. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. I love that movie. Um. No, I like no. I'm thinking Babys- uh, Adventures of Babysitting is one of my favorite. Um, Let It Ride with Richard Dreyfuss. Okay, and uh, it's the name from New York Dolls mm-hmm. with uh, David Johansson. David Johansson, yeah. one of my favorite movies. If it's ever on, which it never is, I will watch the entire film. Uh, you hear ever seen this movie? Little Let It Ride. No, it's on Netflix for a hundred years. It yeah. is one of the greatest movies about horse racing of all time. Um, I will always watch Apocalypse Now. Okay. That's actually my top three. I will yeah. always watch. Um, shoot, shoot him up, shoot him up. I watch. I yeah. watch a lot. Nineteen ninety six with. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm like Queen Latifah. Uh, Hang with the homeboys. Number two. Okay. Always watch Hang with the homeboys. Juice. Young young John. Juice. I will always watch Juice if it's on. Uh, I'll always watch Old Monkey if it's on. Yeah. 
I'll always really watch. Toe Monkeys. That's I, a good one. I never, I've never heard anybody throw Toe Monkeys into that. Temple list. of Doom. I'll always watch okay. over any of the other ones. See, Raiders. Raiders is on my list. But how often is Raiders on? Like Temple of Doom mm. is the one that, for whatever reason, yeah, is in yeah. more circulation. I saw Temple of Doom mm. much more times than I saw Lost Ark when I was growing up. Mm. I think they're all for me. Like all the indie movies, I've watched them an equal amount of times. And all the fly movies, just like a million, really. The, I <laughs> oh love, my god, I hate the uh, fly movies. Oh, I love like the black and white and the Jeff Goldblum stuff mm-hmm. and the Eric Stoll stuff. I love that stuff. I can't watch anything with Jeff yeah. Goldblum. Nightbreed is one of my favorite movies of all time. Great freaking movie. <laughs> I I really if Nightbreed was on right now, I'd stop the show. Okay, watch Nightbreed. Understandable. Um, a lot of horror from that era. I think yeah. I'd watch like. Like Pet Cemetery, I think was was a class. Like, this, flick, I guess, yeah. there was like a few years of really incredibly solid yeah. big blockbuster horror movies are out. I mm-hmm. love the Hellraiser stuff. Ah, Hellraiser. Which one? Amazing. Wait a minute. Which one? One, one two. One two and three, and then no, after I, mean, I can't watch. Three. I like three, man. Three three mm-hmm. is a guilty pleasure, but it's like it it one and two is pretty much near perfect. Yeah, three gets three gets very unserious. Well, that's when it started becoming ridiculous. Yeah, We're like, up to the thirteenth, twentieth one right now. I lost it after nine, and there was a couple in there that were actually pretty good. Were there nine of them? There were. There's. There's a lot now. Yeah. Um, the guy who's now directing uh, Doctor Strange did in a Hellraiser. No, mm-hmm. Hellraiser two was the best Hellraiser. No, first one is by far. Mm-hmm. I love the second one by far. I love the second one, but the first one is such an awesome horror movie on so many different levels. Yeah. I saw one of like the later ones. Frank. The Cenobites, oh, oh the overall, like yeah. the arcing, the arching storyline of Hellraiser is so great. One and two are like it's like Superman one and two. It's like it's one. It's perfect. Like, yeah. For like, people they're, they're who great. don't know, tell them what the storyline is for Hellraiser. Hellraiser is a story of this box that was created that is the source of pain and sorrow and a gateway to hell. And if you come upon this box and able to solve it, you open a gate to hell and succumb to the worst S and M possible with Cenobites who are pinhead. Uh, oh, there's a million of them. There's a bunch of the, the Penhead's core. like the main character. He's the main dude. The yeah. guy. An, an old explorer, uh, Butterball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's his name? The Chatterer. Chip. The Chatterer. Yeah. The female centipede, which is her actual name. They for have a while. sex with yeah. you. Well, they they torch yeah. the shit out of you. They yeah. they that's the whole thing. But the but the best the best part of Hellraiser one is that at the core of it is this guy named Frank who's having sex with this guy with the guy's uh, his sister in law, mm. and. He comes across, he comes across the, the box, right? And he gets sucked in and he's reborn because the box gets reintroduced. Yeah. And becomes this fleshy guy. He becomes a skin stealer. Yeah. Uh, and that's not even yeah, but, I mean, but that's in the second one too, no? The second one is all the same girl who's involved in the first yeah, one yeah. in an asylum dealing with the psychosis, but one of the doctors is actually obsessed with the boxes and has mm-hmm. a series of them and becomes a buddy. So Here's- Pinhead is not evil. No, he is. He is, but like he's, he's more of like force a of darkness. He's not aggressive evil. He's, he's like, not aggressive. He's evil. like a neutral yeah. evil, where like it's and I don't think it's hell either. I think it's just like it's a dark dimension. Yeah, it is like the dimension of S and F. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's not. There's no devil or anything yeah. like that. It is like pain and darkness is what this is all about. That's what it is, and that was like the whole thing with it, where it's like your ultimate pleasure is the ultimate pain that you experience. Yeah, with I mean, how do they get out of the box? It's just a, it's like a portal. It's like a, it just lets you, you just get you out. Have solve it. You, you have, have to solve it. Yeah, right. you have to solve. There was uh, one of the later ones actually had Ashley come back to like, it. Come back. But it was a piece of shit also. No, that was a Not good a one. Piece of shit also. You saw that one? Yeah, yeah. I liked it, man. I thought I that came was back just because of that. I thought they were gonna actually yeah. gonna revitalize the series. Um, what are the movies? It's such a weird like franchise. I it love, was a really a, weird. It's a forgotten franchise. Night Nightbreed has a special place in my heart too because mm-hmm. that was the that was like the very first like X Men movie I ever saw. Because it really was like an X Men mm-hmm. type of thing, and also I read the book in like one sitting. Okay. Um, what else? I mean, it's a lot of childhood stuff. It's a lot of stuff that like yeah. I I watched so much horror, and we had such good eighty stuff. But it was gory eighty. Like RoboCop yeah. always watch when it's on. I'll always oh, watch Predator when it's on. Escape from New York. Escape. Uh, it's it's up there. It's up there. Big Trouble in Little China. I'll always yes. I'll always watch Absolutely. when it's on. Did you did you see the uh, John Carpenter interview on uh, El Ray with uh, Robert Rodriguez? I haven't watched any El Ray at all. Fantastic stuff. Uh, did you pick up Book Trouble in Little China number one? This no, week? incredible. When did it come out this week? This week. Damn it! I uh, had no idea it was uh, Powell. The I've, whole thing was Eric Powell. I've been waiting for it. I didn't think it was this week. I thought it, it was takes like next place month. right at right, right when the monster is behind the truck cab. Really? It goes right into that and like it's Beautiful. right after. So awesome. good. Good to Bad and the Ugly, no? I'll always watch all the all of those movies, especially Good to Bad and the Ugly. Good to Bad and the Ugly is a movie you can sit down and mm-hmm. watch at any point in the movie you'll enjoy. The other ones, yeah. the first one's a little difficult, more difficult. Yeah. Um, 
Back to the Future. That's on my list. Eh. Which yeah, I, one? I've watched a ton of it. The first two? The first one, definitely. The like third the f- one was awful. I like the third one. I like the third one, but I, I wouldn't watch it by itself. Yeah. Um, Raiders, Robocop, right. Total Recall. Total Recall, I'll watch. Total Recall's ridiculous. Die Hard. Die Hard, I'll watch. Robocop yeah. 1 or 2? 1. 1. 2 is not even an issue. 2 is, two is gory. Yeah, 2 sucks, though. With the kid? Sucks. Nuke? Two, two has like they're all, all into nukes. Two has two has all the elements of a good movie. It does not, yeah, done well. Dawn of the Dead. Uh, I have not seen enough in my lifetime. Really? Yeah. Go home and watch it. No, I know, home. I know. I I love the movie. I love that movie because it's like, uh, you know, what my first dead movie was mm. when I, before I saw Night Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead. Okay, the weirdest, the, the wacky one. Yeah, <laughs> the weirdest ones. Um, Reservoir Dogs. Always watch them. Yeah, so the Tarantino wrong. movies have like a special place. I think Tarantino like, was such know. an important part. Like uh, from Dusk Dawn, mm-hmm. watch anytime it's on. Agreed. Uh, you can jump in that movie anytime. You'll have a good time. Yep. Um, you know what we watch? Like I, going back because I used to have. I was an early adopter of cable and like the UHF devices and stuff like that. Okay. So I had like HBO and Sam Max, and that was it. Uh, I was a huge fan of how I got into advertising. No, no, the secret, uh, secret of my success. Okay. With Michael J. Fox, where he sleeps his aunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rises to the top. I watch that almost every single day. Uh, a lot of Goonies. Mm. A lot of Goonies. Goonies is like a weird staple, too, man, because Goonies was always on. Incredibly like, Goonies, Goonies was weird. Incredibly. You think it's held up? I don't think it's Absolutely. held up. Absolutely. It held looks up, fantastic. Jurassic Park is another one that's, that's really held up. I hate Jurassic Park. Get out of your mind. Jurassic Park I love, but I can't watch it again because I watched it last year, and I was like, eh. I think it looks, still looks great. I want to preserve my love for that movie. Mm, I think it still looks yeah. great. I think everything about that one looks great. Terminator 2. Yeah. Terminator 2, probably the best Terminator. Uh, Better than the first one. Number one rocks. They're two totally different types of movies. Yeah. Number one is a complete horror movie. Yeah, yeah. but two, two is like two is legendary your, is, at this is, point. Is your biggest like it's action a franchise. movie of all time. Number one is straight up like Frankenstein. It's it's yeah. going against the unstoppable monster. I got a good one for it. Mm. A good franchise that never really made a terrible flick. Aliens. I love the aliens. I love every single one of the aliens. The alien, alien I'm not counting Alien vs. Predator. But Aliens Aliens Resurrection. Yeah, like one, yeah. two, three, four. Loved them. Yeah. Uh Prometheus. Yep. Love that Prometheus was really good. I loved every single one of those movies mm-hmm. for its own reason. I love like people shit on three. I love three. Yeah. The Dave Mitchell one. No, I thought two and three were really good. Resurrection was the fourth one. Yeah. That which, was, which was it was the more adventure I, one. I love that movie. Yeah. I love the director for the movie. Uh what I are they it. doing with Prometheus? They're doing another one. What what are they gonna do beyond? Like, what's the storyline? I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen the movie yet. We'll find out when the script is done. I think you're gonna get more of a crossover between I think Prometheus and Alien. I think you'll get more direct Alien stuff. I yeah. thought that was a really good movie. I, I watched. I was the I was actually Shining. surprised how good it was. The Shining. I'll watch anytime. What's your favorite Kubrick movie? It's a tough one. See, Kubrick, like the Coen Brothers, a lot of the movies I've seen from mm-hmm. him. I didn't like the first time I watched it, and I love every single time much more when I watch it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I love 2001. I mm-hmm. love uh, Shining. Mm. Love Clockwork. Great movie. Love Barry Lyndon. Barry Lyndon's good. Yeah. Barry Lyndon is exceptional if you can get through it. Mm-hmm. If you can get beyond it being a very quiet movie, it is yeah. it's such a rewarding film. Um. I love eyes wide shut. I love what I mean. He has such a great body of work. Okay, mm-hmm. how long? How long do we have left? Because I want to. I want to talk about uh, something have, comic uh, book related. Ten minutes. Yeah. Can we talk about original sin? Yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we should. should. Right? Um, The Shining. Now, before we get into it, uh, younger Clockwork Orange favorite Kubrick movie. As an adult, I think The Shining trumps everything because the older you get, the more you can associate yourself with Jack Torrance. Which is kind of weird. You do put right? yourself in the seat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's much more understandable how it is. Exactly. And, and plus, I started watching the movie all over again when I saw the uh, the documentary about the, the theories behind it. Love Amazing. It. Love it. I'd rather talk about this than fake the moon landing. Finish off on Original Sin. Uh, you want to talk about Original Sin next week? Yeah, because I have an idea behind behind this, too. I have a all better right. idea of what I came up with before. All right. Do it. Uh, I want to talk. I want to talk about two thirty seven. No, no, no. I want to in in, in the coming weeks. I want to mm-hmm. talk about our favorite backstabs slash heel turns in comic books. Okay, like the one the times when you get a real big surprise on, like reveals, big, like a, right. re, that right. a reveal in terms of someone 
backstabbing, like the runaways. That works. Yeah. You know, like what's his name? Stabbing back. Okay. Talk about movies. Um, Room 237. Loved it. Uh, you, saw, you saw the whole thing? I saw the whole thing. Um, my my two favorite theories from taken away from that are the moon landing. Yeah, obviously. The moon landing is so strong. And the Native American theory. The Native American thing is, is I never mm-hmm. realized before, but it's everywhere in the film. Yeah. Between like the rooms and like the the overarching mm-hmm. idea, the axe at the end, which he never really brings up. And, right. Uh, For people that don't know what we're talking about, um, there's a documentary about The Shining called Room 237, um, which posits like maybe five. There's a lot. There's, they, they touch on like a ton of theories, but they focus really on you know, like three yeah. to five. There, yeah, there's like, let's say, let's say like three to five major conspiracy theories that have to do with why Kubrick made this movie the way he did and kind of went off text with visually with uh Stephen King. A simple novel. story about psychic children. Right. You know, um, and one of the theories was how Kubrick this was Kubrick's way of dealing with faking the moon landing. Well Kubrick was apparently the story was that Kubrick was approached by the US government mm-hmm. to film the moon landing. Right. And that this was his response to it. Okay. Well the 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 theory was that he did it, couldn't say anything. And that this was his answer to it. And th- this yeah, was his yeah, answer yeah. to it, like leading up to like the frustration that he has to deal with where he's like with the, uh, with the kid, he's going in circles. He keeps seeing the same room, et cetera. You know, like yeah. the weird visual things that he had to do, like the secrets, him driving himself crazy. And right. Yeah. The um, father being the authority figure of the government, not leaving, not leaving all work and no play. Make yeah. Jack a dull boy. Yeah. Um, the native American thing I found very interesting. If you watch the movie, there's a lot of hints that, it has to do with the decimation of the Native American people, and in, incredibly, that's I think that's the most fascinating theory of all of them. Yeah, and what was it in the in the hotel that you see different hints that like there was a lot of Native American influence at where the hotel was? And, yeah, the location, yeah. the room names, the products they were using. There was like the, the like the mm-hmm. the potatoes they packaging they had when he was locked in the ice the ice room mm-hmm. the um the uh, the, fr- the cellar the, the yeah. fridge and like there was something about that I don't remember I, was, I saw this when it first came out. Mm-hmm. But the Native American thing I've never heard about before that, and it was such a fascinating theory. Why watch the movie? It's I think it's on Netflix now for free. Um, awesome, awesome. If you know Shining, this is a really good. No, it is on Netflix. Yeah, that, uh, it's like Room Two Thirty Seven. Two Thirty Seven. You should uh, watch a. Uh, you know my favorite movie on on Netflix, right? Mm. Act of Killing. It Man. It Man is incredible. <laughs> oh my God, It Man. It, it Man One and Two are so freaking phenomenal. Perfect. Yeah. I, I got so much fun. I saw. I know. I got. I got. I, well, because it because it has all yeah. the trappings of like an awesome adventure movie. Yeah. Beyond it being like a historical drama and everything. Uh, I watched a movie uh last week on Netflix. I went on South Korean binge. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been on Netflix forever. Chaser. Okay. What a fr- one of the best movies I've ever seen. In my life. Yeah. It's about a an ex cop who becomes a pimp, and his girls start disappearing, and he thinks they're being sold, but there's actually a guy like, you know, murdering them mm-hmm. terribly, but. It goes in such a strange direction so early on. It's such a different way of doing like catch a killer type of okay. thing. It's so well done. It's right up there with Old Boy. Chaser. Chaser. I'll check it out, man. Have you seen Old Boy yet? Good. No, is it good? I can't believe it. Yeah, Old Boy is. No, the original Old Boy. We watched it together. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, you should see you should see <laughs> the old, the new Old Boy just to take a dump on it. We watched it together and I got you a tin. For no, I have I still have the yeah. I still have the collection. I don't remember if you were watching it. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember us watching it together. I watched it. Yeah, we watched it together. I watched that movie like three or four times. Um, I haven't watched the James Brolin one. So terrible. Is it? So terrible. I have it. I have it queued up. You should watch it. Watch Grand mm-hmm. Budapest Hotel. Yeah, you'll definitely enjoy that. Uh, I actually downloaded um, and I what, what which I watched. Uh, I got a Blu-ray copy of um, They Live, and it's mm. friggin' beautiful. I watched a really good. Uh, I watched these specials from this guy named uh, Slovaj. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slovaj Zizek. Mm-hmm. He's a philosopher and he has these, the Pervert's Guide to... Did you make that so, name up? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, he has a movie called Pervert's Guide to Ideology mm-hmm. on, and he talks about... What he does is he'll bring ideology and philosophy in the context of film. It's okay. easy if you don't understand it. So he'll take like a he'll take the fight scene from They Live, mm-hmm. talk over it, and then insert himself in the scene and talk about it. Like what they live means in terms of ideology. Okay. Uh, they live is one of the biggest parts that they really focus on. It's a phenomenal freaking movie, man. It's Incredible. It's such movie. a crazy, crazy movie. Watch that. Try to watch that John Carpenter interview with Ronald Rodriguez because he he goes into every movie that he's made and like the methodology behind it and talking about they live at length, saying like, listen, I was pissed off at everything, 
and this is an independent filmmaker's way to deal with it. They Live is a movie I'd watch any time. Mm-hmm. Thing would be another movie I'd watch oh, any time. Yeah. Thing is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Absolutely. Uh, one of the movies I'd watch any time, and I've watched it every single time it's on, mm-hmm. of course, Point Blank. Yeah. Love that I've movie. only seen it twice. Such an incredible movie. Yeah. You should see a sequel. The sequel's good, too. Do you love... Uh, Cusack? Cusack. I love Cusack. Yeah. What's well, your favorite Cusack movie? Of course, Point Blank. Okay. Easily. It's not... Um, it's not a big radio. Big radio guy. <laughs> big I radio. always forget the name of that movie. Um, say anything. Yeah, definitely not. Big I love I love the movie, yeah. but I, I love Girls Point Blank. Best soundtrack. Uh, what what is your favorite? Um, what's your favorite horror movie, Andrew? Uh, Romney. It's a de- documentary. Goonies. No. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. The first Night- one. Nightmare yeah. on okay. Elm Street. Nightmare. I'll go. I'll go. Chainsaw. Original chainsaw. I think I think the 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 first chainsaw is the scariest idea ever. Even Exorcist? Halloween. I mean, Halloween is Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. is like I, I that's my favorite type of horror movie. Is it's real <laughs> people taking out of their their comfort zone into a world that they have no idea what the f- is going on. Yeah. You know what was really House of a Thousand Corpses was really good. I too. love all those movies. Those yeah, movies, we, there's a special place in all of our hearts for yeah. those movies. That was a really good horror film. Well, the sequel is even better. In a different way. Uh, that was really just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, how did you like, uh, did we talk about this? Salem? Salem's not Salem I hate it. Did um, you watch it? Uh, what's it called? Witches of Salem? The Witches, of, the, oh witch, the, the Witches of Salem, yeah. Is that? No, yeah. it's not. That's not what it's called. The Presidents of Salem. I totally forgot. I totally fr- forgot the name of this freaking movie. Okay. Um, anyway, keep on talking. Salem. But you saw, you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. saw it. Lords of Salem. Lords of Salem. Yeah. Uh, what'd you think? I didn't like it. Okay. And I, I thought there was... No, not 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 at all. I think the beginning of the movie, like leading mm-hmm. up to everything, is so awesome. It creates such a look of dread, and the mood is awesome. Like I was really expecting the worst. When it all like paid off, I thought it kind of fell apart. But there's a lot of cool stuff in that movie. Yeah. Um, like dicks, like the, dicks. <laughs> the guys jerking dicks. Andrew, you uh, you should download or watch Lord Lord of Salem. Salem. I want to get your opinion on this. It's, don't don't I'm Wikipedia understand. look it up. Just I'm like Wikipedia. No, no, you're not gonna get it. It's it's all visual. <laughs> it's a really a visual movie. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think that does it for this episode. Lords of I'm Salem. hot. I'm pretty sure you're you're boiling right now. Pretty warm. Pretty hot. All right, everybody. This has been another episode of Behind the Counter. We'll catch you next week.